This is the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show, a weekly recap of your Philadelphia Eagles. Broadcasting live from Hard Rock Cafe in Philadelphia, tonight's show is brought to you by Penn Community Bank, Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia, Independence Blue Cross, The Capitol Grill, Rob's Automotive and Collision, and BCWSA. We now go live to the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Center City, Philadelphia for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Jolovitz and Paul Domowich. And welcome, everybody, to the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff for December 12th. We are virtually here for another week as the Hard Rock Cafe continues to undergo renovations. It'll be great when it comes back. We got a great show now for you. Paul Jalvitz, again, along with Paul Domwich, our guest tonight. We could spend the entire show introing our guest, one of the 100 greatest college football players of all time, also one of the 100 nicest people of all time, All-American at UCLA, started there as a wide receiver, converted to, uh, to linebacker, rather, first-round draft choice for the Eagles in 1979, the last linebacker who has that regard, played for the Eagles for six years, the Raiders for seven, We'll get the rest during the show, Jerry Robinson. Introductions can take a while. How are you both, guys? <laughs> hey, well, hello, Chili Philly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, yeah. you guys. How are you Not guys are you doing? Good? I'm doing well, yep. Johnny. Thanks for asking. So, Jerry, yesterday the Eagles and Damo kind of tapped the Giants on the shoulder and said, we're the Chiefs of the NFC East. Jalen Hurts was unbelievable. 84, 91-yard drives. Good in all three phases, including special teams. Lost a couple guys, but Damo moved to 12-1, and one, clinched a playoff spot. They can clinch the division, but not until Dallas on Christmas Eve. Your, your thoughts on yesterday's blowout? <laughs> I was uh, so excited. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Doc. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, check it out, because I I didn't mean to jump in, but you know what? I've been hitting the head so many times, I've been concussed. So when you said <laughs> it, I just went rolling with it before I forget it. Excuse me for interrupting, right. but I got to say this. It was so exciting to watch that game yesterday. I mean, I woke up early in the morning. It was like game time for me, you know, and I just remember I the thing that popped in my head before, just before the game started, it started showing the, you know, the rivalry, the games between each other, 100 and some games or however many years have been playing. And then Herman Edwards pops up with the, you know, the Miracle of the Meadowlands. That was the year before I got there. And then I started thinking about it. I said, yeah, that was one of those, that was one of those rivalries that, uh, there wasn't any, uh, you know, any love lost on both sides. But as I watched the game, I'm watching the Eagles execute offense and defense and special teams. And they're a fine oil machine. They're like a high performance car. They are running on all cylinders. And I was just I was impressed with it. And I love the way the game went down. And I just, you know, 12 and one. So finally, you know, I was watching some sports shows this morning. They're finally starting to get the respect that they need. But here's the thing. From my understanding, they don't care if teams respect them or not. They don't care if the uh, sports media or the newspapers respect them. That's not what it's about. It's about the guys in that locker room, you know. And, I, and I'm listening to them talk, and it's about that drive. And it's about that goal to get better every day. And it's about the team comes first. And I'm watching this game, and all of a sudden I start thinking about the game against the Cowboys that are coming up, what, is it Christmas Eve or something? Yeah. I don't know what day it is. Yeah. And it's like that that reminds me of that time back in the 80s when we, when we played those Cowboys three times that year for the division for the conference championship. And that's what it's winding up to be. I mean, they're 12 and one. So it's a couple of weeks away. I know that game. But I'm just I'm so excited about the Eagles, man, because, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles fans, they deserve as much as they can get because they've been through a whole lot of hell in between. <laughs> Tom, before you talk about yesterday's game. The Cowboy game on Christmas Eve, it can be flexed to Saturday night. Is that correct? I know they need 12 days' notice. Is there a possibility of that game being flexed? I don't know the flex rules, uh, Jolly. I don't know if uh, they have the uh, ability to do that uh, right now or not. So I'm not sure. I hadn't heard any whispers that they would. So my guess is it's going to stay at 430, but I don't know that for sure. All right. What do you think about what Jerry said about the respect the Eagles get? Everybody's talking about the Cowboys. Can the Cowboys do this? Can the Cowboys do that? Meanwhile, without drama, the Eagles under the radar, 40, 35, 48. Jalen Hurts, MVP, defense playing well. Shane Steichen calling good plays. Just without any kind of drama whatsoever. 
are these guys a forgotten about 12 and one team in some regards? I, I mean, I don't see it. Uh, you know, they're first in most of the uh, power rankings, including uh, the one I uh, do for the 33rd team. Um, you know, I think this is very unlike the 2017 Super Bowl team in that that team was uh, an underdog. I mean, they, and and they, you know, they jumped on that whole uh, portrayal. I mean, they 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 used that as motivation, being the underdog. You know, we all remember the the dog masks that uh, you know that Chris Long and, and Jason Kelsey and a lot of the players wore. You know, this team, everybody, I think at this point looks at it and says it's probably the most balanced, the most, you know, the deepest, uh, most talented team in, in the NFL right now. Now that doesn't mean they're guaranteed of winning it because you still got to go out there and play. There's plenty of time for key people to get hurt. Uh, but they're, they're getting plenty of respect right now. Jerry, do you remember when you played in 1979, 1980, your rookie year, second year rather, uh, you guys were somewhere in December you were headed to the Super Bowl, but do you remember what your record was? That was a Dallas championship game year and what the vibe was in this city? Because at that point, obviously, I, you'd never been to a Super Bowl. Right. I thought we were like 12 and four or something like that. Somewhere somewhere around there. And the city was just lit up. It was just fired up. I mean, McFadden and Whitehead created a song about the Eagles going to the Super Bowl. And it's like, you know, every time you go to, to a restaurant to have dinner, you didn't have to pay for anything. You know, even if you got pulled over by the state trooper, you didn't even get a ticket. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was, it was live. And it just, and speaking, you know, I got to say something. Since I've been retired, I retired in 92. And, you know, I've been to several different Eagles games. One time when they played against the Niners and when they played against the Raiders, the Eagles fans travel better than any fan group in the National Football League. You go to a game, and the Eagle fans are flying in. You look up in the stands, there's a whole big, huge section of green and white. And you hear them and they make themselves be known. And I, that's, I'm impressed with that because, you know, actually, I know because of my first-hand experience playing for the Eagles, how passionate the fans are, you know. And the Raiders have a very passionate fan group called the Black Hole, too. And the Philly, I tell people, I said, you know what, you haven't? If you think you guys are passionate, which, which the Raider fans are, Raider Nation is strong, but man, those Philadelphia Eagle fans, they are, they take it to a whole nother level. It's like, you know, it's like an, it's like a personal experience with each one of the ball players that they have with the with the fans. Even though you may not know them, of course you don't know all of them, but when you see them, they just, you know, I've, I mean, I played in Philly, man. I was invited to more dinners and more <laughs> this and that, and, you know, drinking Chianti and breaking some bread and this and that. And, and it's just, you know, I tell people, I said, I had so much love that was given to me in Philadelphia. You know, I was going to add an I at the end of my name to call myself Robinson. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, felt, I felt I was welcome into the Italian community real easily. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Jerry, I've, I've covered the Eagles. I covered the Eagles for 40 years and would go to some of these road games where, I mean, it was just unbelievable. I remember, I, I remember vividly, uh, the year they were they were remodeling the I think L.A. Coliseum and the, and the Chargers had to play in that soccer stadium in L.A., mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit smaller. And they weren't they weren't a very good team that year. So, I mean, they were having trouble selling tickets even to that. And the Eagle fans just bought out everything. And I mean, you thought you would have thought sitting <laughs> there at that game that it was a home game. And, and then yeah, that was. Yeah, that so was at the that that was at the Home Depot Center. I remember that. I just I just love it when when the Eagles fans they just take over wherever they go, they take over, and I love it. They sure do. I'm sure well, a lot of them have already. Yeah, well, their... in this point. Yeah, I mean, Eagle fans do take over, and they may take over the Windy City, and I doubt they'll take over Dallas. But Eagle fans <laughs> follow their team; they're prideful, but they also wonder about something. Damo, fill in the blank to this. I had Jerry on WIP. The other night and asked him this. I'm going to ask you this now. Jerry Robinson was the first round pick of the Eagles in 1979. There has not been another linebacker picked in the first round by the Eagles since then because of blank. Uh, a change in the uh, uh, the uh, significance of the position in in football. I mean, you just don't see – I mean, every year you don't see very many uh, linebackers, aside from edge rushers who might be linebackers. 
you just don't see many off ball linebackers drafted in the first round. And I think that's, that's the reason. What do you think, Chair? You know, the game has changed so much for uh, – they want to make sure that the excitement of the NFL is there. That's why the games have changed in favor of offense, I know. And, you know, you can't touch him. You can't even breathe on the quarterback. You know, if you if you mispronounce the quarterback's name after you sack him, you're going to get a flag thrown at you, this <laughs> and that. But there's a lot more passing. <laughs> there's a lot more passing game uh, involved. And when I came into the league, you know, I was fortunate to be able to stay on the field. Yeah. All four downs. You know, now you have specialists. You got good dudes that come in for certain, you know, just, just for pass defense. Or some dudes come in for rushers or whatever it is. But I was able to play outside and inside linebacker. And, you know, that old stand, the more you can do, the longer you'll stay around. And so I was able to play both of those positions. And, uh, I, you know, I had that ability to run with those wide receivers or running backs coming out of the backfield while other people get in there and start rushing the passer. So I don't know. The game has changed. You know, it's all about how many points you can score and the spectacular catches for offense. Like I said, I remember when – you used to be able to take the receiver or whoever running back, whoever it was you were covering in man to man defense. You could bump him all the way down the field until us until the ball was up in the air. Now after five yards, you got to turn him, you got to turn loose. And if you don't, it's in favor of the offense. So they're trying to keep the excitement in the game, <laughs> you know, which I, it is what it is. And the rules have changed quite a bit. Yeah. Well, a lot of excitement in this game, obviously this week and all weeks, 12 and one. Eagles rolling along, Jalen Hurts running for 77 more, throwing effective at both. The deep ball, which the Giants stopped pretty well. The Eagles ran right through them and threw right over the top of them, which begs the question four weeks out. Obviously, sports is about championships, guys, not individual awards. But Jalen Hurts seems to me like the clear front runner. I'm talking about over Mahomes, over Allen, over anybody for the NFL MVP right now. Damo, you first. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a two-horse race. It's him and Mahomes, but I would give the uh, advantage right now to, to, to Jalen. I mean, he's he's leading just about every category. I mean, you you can't help watch the Eagles play and, and not see how important he is uh, to that team. Uh, not that Mahomes isn't important to Kansas City, but, I mean, if the season ended right now, I mean, I have a vote for the MVP. It would go, it would go to Jalen. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I feel I look at Jalen and he is right now, as far as hey. I'm concerned, the, M- the MVP, you know, but a lot of people they are thinking about Mahomes because Mahomes is Mahomes. He's done one a Super Bowl. He's yeah. been in another one. And he's spectacular. It's exciting. But let's look at what it is right now. Look at the categories that Jalen's leading in. I mean, and look at this team's overall record. And to me, that's what is really, really, really important. And uh, so we'll see what happens. But if it ended right now, you know, I think it should be Jalen, of course, you know, uh, because he's proven it, you know. But like, but like, I, I'm, listening, I'm, listening, I, I'm listening to this young kid talk talk on TV, and you know, he's not really worried about that. It is not really his main concern. His main concern is to keep winning and doing things for the team, and that's what pushes you because that chemistry in the locker room, you can't put a price on that. They, the the, the guy, the Eagle players. They care about each other. They actually love each other, you know. And when you care about your teammates that much, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get a victory. And, you know, Jalen's not talking about, you know, when people ask him about the MVP, this and that, he just kind of shrugs it on. He just keeps moving and he directs the attention back to the team. He takes it off of himself, which is rare these days in, in, in sports where athletes take the attention. If they get personal attention, they normally stick with it. What he's doing is, you know what, he's not finished. They, 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 they started the job in training camp. And the job is not finished. And but right now, uh, Paul, if, if it was if I had a vote, and if the season did end right now, it'd definitely be Jalen. You know, he he did a after the game yesterday. He was interviewed by a NBC sideline reporter, and I mean, you know, you're you're coming off a win where you just totally dominated uh, the Giants, and he, I mean, he was all all business. I mean, he said we got to we got to improve on this. We've got to build on this. Uh, you know, I mean, he he's all about next week. I mean, that's his mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what you all need. Right, guys, that's what you want. Well, we got to take a quick break first. Let me apologize. We're having some problems with the Internet connections right now. We'll work on those. Brianna Nia, our producer, thank you so much. Back with the Independence Blue Cross 
right after this, the Monday Night Kickoff. But first, who doesn't want a free burger? Listen right now for the chance to win Hard Rock's famous Messi Burger. World Cup semifinals tomorrow. Messi Burger tonight, named after the famed Argentinian soccer star Lionel Messi. Message us on our Facebook Live feed or call 215-949-3232. That's 215-949-3232. With the correct answer to our trivia question, head down to Hard Rock Philly to enjoy the world-famous Messi Burger December 19th. Easy question, layup. What state did Jalen Hurts grow up in, everybody? What state did Jalen Hurts grow up in? We're back with the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff on Zoom tonight. Hard Rock Cafe and going renovations. We're back in a couple of weeks right after this. Hard Rock Cafe in Center City has it all. Great food, free live entertainment on Friday nights, and they're the epicenter for special occasions. Let them rock and roll to you with catering for your next gathering or book a private event space for your band's next meeting. Whether it's lunch, dinner, or late night, let them turn it up at Hard Rock Cafe at 12th and Market Street. For more info, visit hardrockcafe.com. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs, currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-637. 9700. Fall into relaxation at Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. For an introductory price of just $69.95, enjoy the tranquility of their massage services and the rejuvenating glow their facial services provide. They even have specialty services such as a pumpkin facial or their signature hot stone massage. Restore, relax, and reset at one of Hand and Stone's 57 locations in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley. For an introductory price of just $69.95, call or book online at handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See Spa for details. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jolovitz and Paul Domowich. And welcome back to Zoom tonight. We'll be at the Hard Rock again in a couple weeks where they have happy hour Monday through Friday. From 5 to 7 p.m., dollar off Bud Light, Sam Adams, and Blue Moon Drafts. $6 house Chardonnays and Merlot. $5 Smirnoff and Cruise and Room Singles. $7 for doubles. So join us at Hard Rock for live entertainment, not just Monday, but in the cafe every Wednesday. Enjoy some great food and drink specials, our happy hour specials, every Wednesday from 5 to 7. Guys, there was a special yesterday. You never want to say you've seen it all in sports, in football, in anything. Did you guys see the high school play in Midland, Texas, state championship game, where a guy's kicking a 20-something yard field goal, he hit the referee right in the head, who's standing on the goal line, line drive, hit him right in the head, bounced, hit the crossbar, and went through. Never seen anything close to like it before. The refs talked for about 10 minutes and figured it was it was good. Referee's part of the field. Did you see that at all, either one of you? I didn't see it, but they usually play the state championship game in uh, in – uh, Arlington or one of the bigger stadiums. Yeah, Wherever no, I, 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 yeah, was- I, I didn't see it, but you just described it, and that's amazing. But like you said, the ref is part of that field. You know, you know what? I'm not yeah. crazy about referees anyway, man. I'm not crazy about them dudes and the stripes. I think this has been the worst freaking year of refereeing I've ever seen in my whole life, and it just gets on my nerves. So, you know, I've been. You know, I remember playing for the Eagles. I'm playing inside linebacker, and I'm getting, I'm concentrating. I believe we we're playing that Watt team from Washington, you know, the Redskins back in the day. And all of a sudden, the referee grabs the back of my pants and he pulls me back because he needed to get a better view. 
I'm like, are you kidding me? And it upset me. So you know what I did? I said, I'm going to get him back. I said, I'm going to set him up. So he's right in the middle of the path <laughs> between me and making this tackle. <laughs> And you guys, it was awesome. You know, I, I, you know, I told him, oh man, I'm sorry that you, you know, sorry that you're in the way, but referees get on my nerves. But you know what? The story you just told, I mean, the one ref took it off his head. Good, he deserved it. I'm glad it went in. Lamo, <laughs> do you see the refereeing? The officiating is getting worse, or replay replays taking too long, or what? Which way? How do you see it? Yeah, I don't know if it's getting any worse, but it, it it's it seems that too many calls are influencing the outcomes of games. Uh, you know, I watched that game last night, and, uh, and even the Eagles game. I mean, they they just kind of stayed out of it. <laughs> they let them play. Um, you know, they didn't they didn't call ticky tack stuff. They there weren't a whole lot of defensive pass interference calls in the Eagles game. Uh, that's what you want, you know. I mean, I understand. You know, seven false starts in the Eagles game uh, two weeks ago. I mean, some of those didn't need to be called. I mean, you, you, there's, there's got to be a little bit of leeway. Uh, so, it, you know, I, I don't know if it's any worse, Jolly, but it's probably a little bit more annoying. The, the replays aren't going away, so we just have to deal with the delays. I don't know why they take so long. College seems to, you know, get it re reviewed and and – and an yeah. outcome made it a lot quicker than the NFL. Um, you know, something they've got to talk about. All right. Obviously, the, the replays may take too long. The false starts last week, Donald the Eagles cleaned that up. Didn't really have any of those yesterday. A couple injuries. Yeah. Uh, Lane Johnson tweaked an abdominal muscle. Should be okay. Obviously, Aaron Sippus, the punter, got hurt on that crazy play. Ooh, they had Jake yeah. Elliott punt. We've got to find a punter for this week. The holder, Britton Covey, special teams played pretty well yesterday. Nice return from Boston Scott, answering the Giants' first touchdown. It's been a weak spot all year, Domo, but yesterday was fine with all the problems they had with injuries. Yeah, I mean, they're going to need to go get another punter, obviously. Uh, but, but there's plenty of them out there that are looking for work. So, uh... <laughs> Jerry, you ever punt? <laughs> yeah, I did. I punt. Matter of fact, I used to uh, kick field goals, too, because – the first sport I ever played was soccer. I love me some soccer. I want to be like Pele. That's back in the 60s and the 70s, right? Well, back back then, um, soccer was not very popular in the United States of America, and they weren't making any money back in the 60s and the 70s, especially in this country. So now everything's are different. But yeah, no, I used to kick. I was I was I kicked a couple of field goals and a couple of extra points back in my day. Jerry, I got to ask you this question. Some of our viewers might, might be wondering. You got jersey behind you. Your UCLA jersey's retired. That's 84. You wore 56 with the Eagles. What's 57? You got two of those jerseys, too. Well, the 56 is the Eagles jersey. And uh, my bro I had a brother named Jackie Robinson. And uh, we were born in the same year. He was born in January, and I was born in December. And my senior year in high school, my brother got shot in the head, and he eventually died from the wound that he had. And when I got drafted by the Eagles, number 56 was available because we were born in 1956. So I wore that number in Philadelphia in honor of my brother. And the 57s, when I came to the Raider, a good friend of mine already had 56. So 57 was available. So five and seven, here I'll go with numerology, five and seven equals 12. So we were born in the, you know, I was born December 18th, which is next week. So that's the 12th month. Anyway, that's how. So the, the 56 with the Eagles, 57 with the Raiders. You play with the Raiders, you mentioned, for seven years. Uh, the Eagles for six. Now, there aren't many greater athletes in the history of sports than Jerry Robinson. He's a 9-500, <laughs> I jump 6-5. But I think it's fair to say that Jerry played with one of those better athletes with the Raiders, with Bo Jackson. How, how about Bo Jackson and Jerry Robinson on the same team? And now you have the Pro Bowl with all these skills competitions. Would the Raiders be a lock with those two? <laughs> Let me tell you something about Bo. Uh, speaking of Bo Jackson, I love, I'm telling you guys, he was he was the most amazing, naturally gifted athlete I've ever uh, I've ever been around. I'm glad that Bo was on uh, was on our team. You know, I, I'd give him a hard time when he came in. I mean, my locker was directly across from Bo's, and one day that same day he showed up. When I told him, I said, I knew you was here. 
because the Brinks truck pulled up, so I knew Bo Jackson was here. And so before we went out to practice, I said, hey, Bo, and he looked his head around the corner of his locker, and I said, you know what this is? And I had my hand like this, and I was doing like a, like a curveball, and I threw it at him. I started walking over to him. I said, you know what? You can't hit a curveball to save your life. I said, I tell you what, if you can't, if you can't get your butt in the end zone, for us, go back and play baseball. I said, I'm not going to babysit you. I don't care. I'm not going to treat you like some spoiled baseball player. And if you can't get in the end zone, take your butt back. Actually, I use other words, but I'm going to say butt back and go play baseball. And he said to me, what did I ever do to you? I don't even know you. I said, you made a comment in the newspaper on TV, actually, about football was just a hobby to you. I said, look around this room. This is more than just a hobby to us. This is our livelihood. From that point on, me and Bo became good friends. <laughs> Matter of fact, that story is in Bo's book. So anyway. Gary, there's a great book that just came out on uh, on Bo, uh, written by a guy from uh, uh, this area, Jeff Perlman. The, uh, yes. A bio on Bo. It's uh, really good. Yeah, well, that's in there. The story I just told you, I talked oh, to Jeff about it. Book? Yeah, he put it in the book. But I don't know if he put the actual words that I used <laughs> that day in the book or not, because there were a couple <laughs> of choice words I had to, I didn't want to leave out while we're doing this. But yeah, but it was just, but he was just remarkable. He was just a remarkable athlete. And it's just a shame that his career was cut, was cut short. Yeah. Okay, Jolly, I know you're frozen right now, buddy. That's okay. We'll take over the show. I'm here, Jerry. So, I, I got a question for you and Dom. We continue to have trouble with the internet, but we're going to get it fixed. How? I don't know, but we'll, we'll work on it. We we'll always work, work it. on it. Dom, uh, we're talking about Bo Jackson. Nobody's going to put Miles Sanders in Bo Jackson's league as an athlete, but he's having a hell of a year for the Eagles. Fourth year running back, went over 1,000 yesterday, 144 yeah. yards. A.J. Brown, by the way, also went over 1,000. Eagles have a very tough decision this offseason. Going to have to re-sign Jalen at some point. Some of the luxury is going to come off the books. Is Miles Sanders a luxury? Is he one of them? No, I don't think he's a luxury. I, you know, they're going to have to sign. I mean, they're going to have to. I mean, running back's a an important part of this offense. So, uh, you know, it's going to come down to what he wants, uh, what their you know what their number is for uh, the running back position. I mean, they do have Gainwell. They do have Boston Scott. Uh, but you know, I mean. You know, watching that game yesterday, I mean, he not only had – he ran for 144 yards, but Miles did a nice job blocking. I mean, he even got a shout-out today from Nick Sirianni on a on a block on, on on uh, on you know, he on in pass protection on uh, keeping, you know, keeping Jalen Hurts from getting hit. Uh, he's just – he's just having a really, really good year. Having a great year, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Salary caps – makes football different than when you played in what way in, in your opinion is the greatest change with a cap would would teams that you played on with the eagles or the raiders have been busted up and what was it like playing with the same guys year to year where now it would be very different i tell you what well first of all the number one thing that question gets it asked to me a couple of times what's the difference between now and then when i played the biggest difference in the national football league now is something called a direct deposit Okay, we would get our check. <laughs> we get our sometimes we get our checks in the lock in your pocket day of the game, and sometimes you'd have to walk in on Monday, you know. But uh, things have changed a whole lot in that area right there. But it does say a lot when you're able to keep the same core and the same group of guys around. You know, I don't understand all that, you know, that that financial side of it. Kind of do, but kind of not enough to really talk about it expertly. But um, you know, there's decisions, tough decisions that need to be made, you know, in organizations. And uh, the Eagles have a couple coming up, you know. But, you know, if you can keep that team together, that's what that's what it is. Because the longer you are together, and especially the way they're playing, they're clicking like on all cylinders. Like they know what each other's thinking. If you don't have to, you know, when you go out there and play like that, you don't have to think. Just go out there and play and just relax and just just, just and react and do what you got to do, and that's when the game becomes fun. You know, it's when when you have to overthink too much and you got to worry about this and worry about that, and then you start might be making mistakes or you might do something stupid that could cost the first down or a touchdown, whatever. 
that's no fun in the game. So you get used to your your teammates, you know, because it's a family. Once you become a family, because that's what Coach Vermeil did. One thing that he really did, he did several things, but he was big on family. He was big on family because a, a close family, they'll do whatever they got to do to make sure that, the, that their, their brothers or their sisters are all taken care of. And he, Coach Vermeil was big on that. Well, we'll talk about family more on the other side with Coach Vermeil, which leads us into our second question, Mr. Domwich. Uh, question about Dick Vermeil again for a messy burger at the Hard Rock Cafe. Respond on Facebook Live by calling 215 949 3232. Dick Vermeil began his, college, or his high school coaching at Hillsdale High School in San Mateo, California back in the day. He also recruited Jerry Robinson to UCLA, but he coached another sport at Hillsdale too, a sport in which his team was undefeated in three years. What sport was that? What sport other than football did Dick Vermeil coach at Hillsdale California High School in San Mateo, California? We'll be back with the answer and much, much more. We'll talk around the NFC. Who's the second best team? Vikings lost yesterday. Cowboys should have, but didn't. This is the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff with Jay Robinson, my co-host Paul Domwich. We are back right after this. Hard Rock Cafe has it all. Great food takes center stage as they tune up your visit with free live music every Friday night at 6. Sponsored by Conshohocken Brewing Company. See Philly's best rocking the main stage while you enjoy Hard Rock favorites right here in Center City. Pickup, delivery, and catering available. For more info, visit hardrockcafe.com. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in giving you the tools you need to pursue your healthiest life. From premiums as low as $0 per month to health discounts and cash rewards, it pays to have coverage with Independence. With the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free 24-7 virtual doctor visits, you can feel confident that quality care is always within reach. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs, currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215 636 9700. Don't hang out alone in the man cave this football season. Hang out at Cheerleaders with sexy entertainers, $4 Miller Lights, Jameson specials, and awesome game day prizes during all Sunday and Monday football games. Stop in before, during, or after the game to see your favorite entertainers and your chance to win an awesome game day prize. The most epic game day experience is at Cheerleaders Gentlemen's Club, <laughs> where champions play open daily from noon till 2 a.m. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jolovitz and Paul Domowicz. And remember, Friday Night Live with the Hard Rock Live Music, Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. with no cover. The best local artists on the main stage every week. Make your reservations, www.hardrock.com. We can also pick up some hats, maybe not like the one Jerry's wearing. Jerry's buddy, Harold Carmichael, who you might have heard of, he's in Canton right now and not visiting either forever in the Hall of Fame, is the godfather of Jerry Rice. Uh, Jerry Rice, Jerry Robinson's daughter, not a bad Jerry to be compared to. Jerry, you're wearing a hat tonight. Tell us about the hat. Well, the hat I have on right now is Coach Vermeule's Hall of Fame hat, but I just happen to have Harold Carmichael's Canton Football Hall of Fame hat. So, you know, to That's me, tremendous. when Harold went in, like I said, uh, we're, 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 we're like best friends. I love him and his family, B and Lee and everybody. And he is my daughter's, uh, him and B are my daughter, Jack is my daughter, Jacqueline's godparents. And it was just so special to be there with someone you played with, is number one. But then not only did you play with, you were friends with, not only that, you, I know that he's one of the greatest guys. He's a Hall of Fame human being. Thing too and so that was really exciting for me that's why that was harold's this is harold carmichael hat and then you said coach for well here is coach for right here and you talk about another Tom, the last two hat? years 
You were out there. Where's the hats? Uh, he's got. He don't want to mess with his hair. He's got him there. He, no, Dom, don't mess with the hair, dude, brother. I know he's got them all. So the one right here, <laughs> <laughs> the Coach Ramil one too. There goes even... Zoom, everybody. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So the Coach Ramil situation was, you know, uh, I'm a. Anyone has ever played for Coach Ramil, you become a family member. And um, so for me, it was a really uh, special day for me because he is the man that made it possible for my dream to come true, you know, to play in the National Football League when he when he drafted me in 1979. So I have his hat on too. So, but by the way, so when Harold went in, it was Harold and Coach Flores. And I also have Coach Flores hat on too, as a matter of fact. I have it over here. But Coach Flores, last year, Coach of the Raiders, both Super Bowls. That's right. That's right. And so just for respect for everybody, here's my uh, here's my Coach Flores hat. I see it right there. So Coach Flores and Harold went in together. So Coach Vermeil and Cliff Branch went in together. So now I have my Cliff Branch hat too. So, but just in case, you know, now if I was in Chili Philly right now, I'd be wearing this hat. If you see this hat right here? This is the kind of hat I'd be wearing when I was in Philly. I'd be getting me a cheesesteak. Oh, man, a Philly cheesesteak. A brother died for one of them. Anyway, those are my hats. Those are people that I care about. It's just, it was a great privilege and honor for me to be able to see them with their gold jackets on because they've made a, been such a big part of my life, and I love them forever. So I have their hats. I just wanted to display those hats. Do you have any friends, Jay, that aren't in the Hall of Fame at this point? Yeah, I got a lot of friends that are in the Hall of Fame. You know, there's something special about about that Philadelphia Eagle team because before Coach Vermeil got there, as you guys know, the Eagles weren't very good at all. I mean, he turned that program around, and the loyalty that they had for him and the loyalty that Coach Vermeil had for the players is just – I can't really explain it to you. You have to experience it yourself. And we're all like brothers, you know, and when um, Coach Mill went into the hall, you know, I got to see Frank LeMaster, John Spagnola, John Bunning, Frank, you know, uh, didn't see Bubba Berkey because he was at home and uh, Vince Papali. And when I saw Vince Papali, I saw his son, his son Vince. I said, you know what? Your dad hated me. And Vince was right there. And he said, no, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. I said, but. I didn't know why all those years that you hated me so much or that your dad hated me until I saw the movie Invincible. Then I didn't know his story while we were playing, but I said, you know what? He did what he didn't have, he didn't like anybody. Vince probably didn't like anybody, you know, but you know, so anyway, I had a chance to see, you know, uh, Reggie Wilkes and just some of those old to Kenny Clark and just, it's just it was like a family reunion is what it was so you know they're always will always be special we do a lot of group texting man to make sure that everybody's okay we just you know in this day and age you know you got people that are getting older that, that are no longer around so we make sure that we get in touch with each other at least once a week to see how everybody's doing Tom, well, you're a hall of fame voter any other eagles from the 80 team you even get conversation with a hall of fame obviously a couple nope. guys were in reggie white went in after that wasn't on that team, but any any other discussion? Well, I mean, you know, Eric, the, he didn't play with Jerry, but uh, Jerry had left by then. But uh, Eric Allen's a semifinalist this year. Uh, I'm hoping he gets makes the, the finals. We uh, yeah, today was our uh, last day of voting, so I'll find out in a while. Whether, uh, you know, in a few days, several days, whether he makes the final fifteen. Um, Eric uh, he, Allen played for the Raiders too. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I saw, interceptions I, in his career. Yeah. You know, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I saw Eric at the uh, San Diego game last week because he does broadcasting for the Las Vegas Raiders. And it was just good to see him. It really was because, you know, he deserves to be in there. I hope he gets in there, too. There'd be another trip to Canton. You know what I mean? Get me another <laughs> green. Get me another. Get me another green hat, baby. <laughs> there you go. No, he deserves Four to be more in hats. His, All right. Cornerbacks. Yep, not a lot of cornerbacks, not a lot of safeties. 54 interceptions for Eric Allen, who played for both Jay Robinson's Eagles and Jay Robinson's Raiders. Plenty of teams <laughs> Jay didn't play for that have some pump in the NFC, and we're going to ask right now, Damo and Jerry. Damo, who's the second-best team in the NFC? Cowboys barely got by a 17-point underdog Texan team at home. <laughs> Vikings got whacked by the Lions, which I told everybody was going to happen. You got Tampa. You got a couple others. 
Who's the second best team in the NFC? San Francisco. After even, Brock even... Purdy's, I mean, that's, I mean, I was just leaving that open for you. Purdy played yesterday. First guy to be Brady in his first game, so what? But I their watched, defense is awesome. I watched a lot of that game yesterday. Brock Purdy really amazed, uh, impressed me with his, you know, with his coolness, his confidence. His, you know, he just didn't look like a guy who was making his first uh, NFL start. I mean, he looked like a guy. That, he outplayed Tom Brady for God's sakes. Jay, what kind of what's what kind of publicity is he getting in the Bay Area today after that wonderful uh, performance yesterday? He's getting a lot of publicity. But I am pulling for Mister. You no longer, even though he's still Mister. Irrelevant. That's the way his history is going to be read. But you get Mr. Irrelevant against the GOAT, okay? And look who came out on top. And just to hear the story about, you know, when he met Tom, you know, off, when the game was over and he shook his hand, this kind of stuff, that, that's, that's a great story, man, because I know what it's like to, to, to watch somebody on TV and now all of a sudden you're playing in the league against those people. I mean, you know, when I came in, there's Starbuck and there's, 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 there's uh, Bradshaw, you know, Terry Bradshaw, and there's Franco Harris, and there's Dorsett, and, there's, you know, all these people like this. And then then playing, you know, 1979 against the Steel Curtain, your Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, and Rocky Blair. I know what he was experiencing, but they love him here. I love the kid, too. You know what? Remember the first play? He, then he, the first pass he tried to throw, he got blasted. Didn't he get blasted in his ribs on the first? Yep, but he came crushed. back. Right yeah, up. got crushed. But the most important thing, that the, the most exciting thing that I got out of that game, besides the way he controlled himself, was when he threw that touchdown pass to McCaffrey and he showed his father in the stands shedding tears. To me, what a story. What a story. So I would think, when you, you know, uh, Dom, you're talking about the second best team in this city. That 49er team is something. They they really are. I mean, they they truly are. But and and you know, probably next would be those Cowboys. You know, that that's that's tough to get out. Say Cowboys for me anyway. But this it's all about the defenses. You know, I mean, uh, hey, you look at those two defenses, the 49er defense, and that Cowboy defense can get fired up too. So I I like the 49ers. I really do. Uh, you know, I wish them all the luck in the in, in the world, but. You know, my love for Dallas, you know, I don't know if y'all know where my love for the Dallas stands, kind of cowboy stand. I won't even talk about it because we're I don't want to start cursing. I don't want an AFIP to take place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. When we come back, Damo, take our final break. We're gonna ask Damo and Jerry. Eagles play the 49ers tomorrow at a neutral field, let's say in Glendale, Arizona, where a little game like the Super Bowl happens to be played in a couple of months. Who would you take right now? The Eagles or the Niners? Do you think it could happen? We'll talk about the S word, the Super Bowl. Yes, it's okay in Philadelphia. And yes, this is the year. Why not wait? Because you don't want to wait for anything. Do it now in life, which is right now. Like we have a question for you. Again, uh, message our Facebook live line or call 215-949-3232. 215-949-3232 and answer this simple question. Who is Jalen Hurts' offensive coordinator at Alabama? in 2017 hint he coached yesterday somewhere who was Jalen Hurts offensive coordinator at Alabama in 2017 think about that answer it answer our two other questions we're back with the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff final segment right after this stay with us Hard Rock Cafe in Center City at 12th and Market Streets has it all. Great food takes center stage with dine-in and pickup available. Their burgers are so famous, they have their own chauffeurs. So order delivery and catering too. So if you're celebrating or just getting the band together, Hard Rock Cafe's got your back. For more info, hit up hardrockcafe.com. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. 
A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215 636 9700. Fall into relaxation at Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. For an introductory price of just $69.95, enjoy the tranquility of their massage services and the rejuvenating glow their facial services provide. They even have specialty services such as a pumpkin facial or their signature hot stone massage. Restore, relax, and reset at one of Hand and Stone's 57 locations in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley. For an introductory price of just $69.95, call or book online at handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and Paul Domowicz. All right, back with the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff final segment with Paul Domowicz. Our guest, former Eagle linebacker Jay Robinson. Tremendous show, guys. Damo, this one to you first. Eagles and Niners with Brock Purdy and the best defense in football. That's the Niners, not the Eagles. Eagles are right up there in all phases. Play tomorrow in Glendale, Arizona for the NFC Championship. Neutral field, good weather. Everybody's rested. Obviously, it'll be two days, but we're going to give everybody normal rest in our little question here. Who you got, the Eagles and the Niners? I'm going to... I'm going to give the Eagles a, a slight nod on that. They're going to win it uh, at the end on, a, on, on Jalen Hurts' 100th quarterback sneak of the season. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's a great quarterback sneak that they have, by the way. You know, I'm, well, I, 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 thought about, <laughs> I thought about that, and I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles because what's going to happen is Mr. Irrelevant, okay, during – they don't have much film on this young man yet. That's and and defensive these defensive coordinators. That's what they look at. Okay, once they start figuring out some things, they're going to set him up to make some mistakes. Okay, mm -hmm. those defenses are closely matched, but offensively, you know, hey, I'm I'm rolling with the Eagles all the way. But that defensive defensive side of it, they're going to be doing some things. He's going to see some things that he thinks he knows what he's looking at, and then all of a sudden, there's going to be a shift. And they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna trap him into doing a few things. So I would take the Philadelphia Eagles because uh, the Philadelphia Eagles fans deserve another one. All right, that makes it three for three. I would take the Eagles too. Domo said something about the quarterback sneak, which is easily the best in football. I want to ask <laughs> you about that, Jerry? But but this first, Eagles line up Domo fourth and one yesterday in quarterback sneak. You know, whatever you want to call it, and pitched to Miles Sanders. Shane Steichen said uh, the defense is lined up to stop that. This set works here. Flipped it to Miles Sanders. If the Eagles do things right and Jalen Hurts making all the right decisions, Shane Steichen making all the right play calls, the sneak works every time, they're not impossible to stop, but it's a hell of a poison to pick for any D coordinator, isn't it? You talking to me or Jerry, Jelly? You, Damo. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the best – It's you know, Tom Brady for years, uh, who, who can't run a lick, but Tom Brady was one of the best quarterback sneak guys in, in football for years. Still is. I mean, but the way the Eagles run it with, 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 with Jalen, I mean, they, you know, you've been able to push guys uh, forward since 2003, I believe, but very few teams have used it. Uh, the Eagles had the, you know, had the smarts to, to realize it and use it as a weapon. Uh, and now, like you had mentioned that play yesterday, you know, we're going to see more of that. I mean, teams are so focused on trying to stop him on those sneaks, you know, that they went with that pitch to the outside. Uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it just expands their offense even more. Yeah. It gives you more as a defensive person to think about, you know, yeah. because, because oh. that, because that pitch yesterday, that was, that was just so sweet. You know what? And it's like, uh, I'm telling you, when you get down there on that goal line, 
uh, when you have weapons that like the Eagles have and they're so successful at running those, that, that's that sneak, and then they throw the option out there, the little pitch out there. It's a nightmare, man. It's a nightmare. Well, let me ask you this, Jerry. You played with a guy at UCLA or played against a guy named Marcus Allen, who you played with with the Raiders uh, later on in your career. Raiders, yeah. UC, USC had to play student body right, student body left, basically a pitch sweep. The Packers were going to go behind Thurston and Kramer. There's nothing you can do about it. How helpless does it make a defense feel? Where do you feel like with UCLA? And what would you feel like <laughs> with anybody today trying to stop the Eagles quarterback sneak? It's the ultimate bleep you, isn't it? Here's what we're going to do. Stop it. <laughs> It, it sure is. It's a, it's a it's a manhood type of thing. Okay, we're gonna tell you what we're gonna do. Let's see if you can stop it. It becomes a huge challenge. It, it really does. You know, you're just you're playing the odds. You know, say they do it. Let's say you got quarterback sneak. Say they run it five times. You know what? You hopefully hopefully you can get it one or two times. You know what I mean? They're gonna be successful with it, but you're hoping that at some point that that, that you do go in there and interrupt that. Hey, I got a question before we get off the air. I know we're running on time here. Jolly, hey man, do I get a T-shirt or something or a hat that's gonna be sent to me or something? I know you were talking about sending me some some cheese steaks, but you know, do you is there a T-shirt that a brother can get so I can sport it around Northern California? They have T-shirts there. I'll be happy to send one to you. Dom, what's okay. your favorite cheese steak in Philly? What's my favorite cheese steak? Uh... Yep. Well, I live over in South Jersey, Jolly. I get most of them uh, uh, from around here. Um, I'm a Pats guy, Jerry. Pats, my freshman year at Penn, I went to Pats the night before school started, and it started a 40-year <laughs> love affair that continues to this day. Gino's is good. <laughs> Jim's is good. A lot of them are good, but there's only one Pats. You want a Pats shirt? It's on your way to you. FedEx, probably Wednesday. Okay. All right. I get I get breathing information, man, because you know what? I Hey, like I said, I'm in Northern California. Everybody's trying to duplicate Philly cheesesteaks, and it just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? It's just some things are just real. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, they always try to – I understand people are trying to duplicate because it's the best that there is. But until you go to Philly, Chili Philly, or Jersey somewhere, where you, or wherever you can get one at, that you know, you don't know what the real deal is like. And I tell you, I've been so frustrated so many times. You know, now I go places and I see – Oh, yeah, Philly cheesesteak. And I look at the owner or whoever's working that cash register, and I want to go up there and tell him, say, you know what? You should be arrested for false advertisement. <laughs> but, but you got anyway. in and out burgers. <laughs> you got in yeah. and out burgers, Jerry. Oh, we do. We have a lot of in and out burgers. Good, but it's not a past cheesesteak. You no, know, it's not. Because I tell you what, when we went back, when I, came, I had traded by the Eagles and came to the Raiders, and our first game back was a couple of years, and Randall Cunningham was the quarterback, and we had Howie Long, of course, was on our team. Anyway, we came back to play the Eagles for the, my first trip back there, and it was a warm greeting. And Howie had – they had delivered – it must have been 50 cheesesteaks, man, Philly cheesesteaks. And that's all I had. I, I mean, I ate as many as I could. We tried to bring some back and this and that. I mean, it was just – there's something about being in Chili Philly, man. There's something about that camaraderie. It's about that family thing. The people in Philadelphia, they love their sports teams, and uh, the players love them too. But I tell you this, if, you, if, you, if you're if you not doing what you're supposed to be doing as an athlete, the fans will definitely let you know that they're not happy. They might even show up at your door. <laughs> they are very passionate. Charlie, did you freeze again? Tom, I've got a question for you, which is what we do here <laughs> on this show. Cheese steaks aside. Gary, <laughs> I think we lost him again. Uh huh. Where do you think he's going to be going with this question? <laughs> I have no idea. I usually never know what where he's going with any question. I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know one thing, Gary, man. You guys have a great show here you really do i'm enjoying being on here i'll tell you that gary you mentioned uh randall um yes great you know, back then back then he was a rarity uh yes now so many quarterbacks that are running uh i mean when you look back on randall i mean what are your uh -huh. thoughts i remember i was like it's not even fair that he can able he's able to do what he was able to do as a quarterback 
you know, throw and run. And because when I went back to that first game back there uh, after I got traded to the Eagles, I came off the corner and I had a bullseye shot on Randall. I was trying to knock the name off of his back. And just as I got there, he spun out of there. And I'm like, damn it, I had him. But his, his elusiveness and his, just his competitiveness, he was a tremendous quarterback, true gifted athlete, period, you know. And, uh, you know, the Eagles were successful when Randall was around, you know. He just, he just, here's another guy that the night before the game, there's certain athletes and ball players you got to play against that Saturday night before the game, you don't sleep well. You really don't get a good night's sleep. Walter Payton was one of those guys for me. And Randall was the same way for everybody playing defense because just when you think you have him, you don't have him, you know. And then he turns that, that 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 move that he might make to get away from you. Next thing you know, it's six points either pass or he's running and people are missing him when he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to tackle him. But Randall was even though it he was one of those ball players that you love to watch play. And it, it was good to play against him. Except I'll still never forget the one thing that I do reg regret is that I had that bead on Randall. Like I said, I was about to tear that name off the back of his jersey and all of a sudden, oops there's air and he's rolling out to my right. I'm like, okay, Randall. You know, uh, Jerry, one of the lasting memories of my career was in Buffalo uh, uh, covering Randall and that team in the eighties. And he's in the end zone scrambling around. And uh, what's the bills, what's the bills hall of fame defensive end? Uh, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce, yeah, Smith. Bruce, Smith. Bruce, Bruce Smith. Smith had him, had him in his sights and uh -huh. he is coming at him. And and he was coming from behind, and Ra and Randall had like radar. He ducks yeah. and and eludes him, and just rears back and 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 fires a fifty yard pass downfield to to uh, Fred Barnett uh, for a for a long completion. I mean, it was just one of the, one of the most amazing plays I still remember in my career. Well, you know, I'll call him Reverend Randall now because he's doing a great job with his ministry in Las Vegas. He's helping a lot of people and he's changing a lot of people's lives. And he does it with a smile and the spirit of the Lord. So I'm proud of him. One of the great guys. Is that Frozen Jolly again? On <laughs> oh, you frozen again? Yes, he is. <laughs> nice picture though jolly you know hey you know but you know what you could probably hear as his face might be frozen but i tell you what jolly i'm looking forward to that t-shirt i really am man you know the <laughs> cheesesteak by the time the cheesesteak got here you know i think it probably gets stolen in in, in transition you know because if somebody knew what it was they'd definitely get it jerry we were talking about uh I, we, we... oh go ahead we apologize for the internet problems profusely. This will not happen again. Don't know why it's happening this time. We're doing our best. Jay Robinson, got two minutes. Real quick question for you. Okay. I asked okay. you this Saturday night, Damo. There's a guy that used to coach the Eagles that coached UCLA named Chip Kelly or coached UCLA. I think the fans would like Jay Robinson's opinion of Chipper. <laughs> well, Chip was a great coach. Uh, great college coach. I saw him play. I went up actually up to Oregon, I, up there to watch play. I mean, he had a great offer. He had it going on. He had it working, whatever it was, how he had it working. But when you shift into that next level, you're dipping with a different type of people. You know, those are grown men. They're not trying to get where to the pros. They're already in the pros. So mentality might be different. Uh, you know, I, I was hoping everything would work out when Chip came uh to the eagles because of the success he had in, in college and evidently it, it didn't work out now he's back in college at ucla my school and you know it takes time to get things you know get things the way you want it to be so you know i don't have anything bad to say about chip because you know i don't because I, I never really worked for chip uh, i just seen him working as a coach and he did an outstanding job up there in Oregon with the Ducks, and it just didn't seem to work out with the Philadelphia Eagles. You guys tell me. You guys were there. <laughs> well, I mean, he – I uh, wish we had time. We, we're kind of out of time today, Damo. Um, love to love to have you on again and, and, and go through the Chip Kelly thing. We apologize for all the technical problems we've had, but Damo, you're a pro. You handled it well. Jay Robinson, you're a tremendous guest. Eagles play the Bears next Sunday in Chicago. We'll talk about that next Monday night. Damo, thank you so much for tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jolly. It was a pleasure. And Jerry, it was 
It was great. Uh, Jerry, uh, thank you very, very, very much for being here. You're welcome, Jolly and Dime, Paul. Hey, take it easy, you guys. I know you guys got to cut the break here. God bless you guys. Yeah, we got to run. To, uh, Merry Christmas to y'all, and my birthday is Sunday. <laughs> happy birthday, Jerry. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever it is, All right, both of you guys. We'll be back next Monday night with another show. Ken Donick will be our guest next Monday night. We'll be virtual one more week, then back at the Hard Rock. This has been the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff. Brian O'Neill and Keith Noonan produced this show and worked with all the technical problems. Thank you very much to both of them. Thanks to Paul Domers. Thanks to Jay Robinson. Thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll be back next week. Go Eagles, everybody. Good night. <laughs>